hello 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 welcome to my channel if you're new here and if you've been here before welcome back so today i'm doing something a little bit different i'm gonna be doing unpopular opinions but the mom edition so i have 10 unpopular opinions that i have written down on my handed in a laptop and i will be giving you my unsolicited opinions so number one breastfed is best okay so before anyone gets upset i'm gonna give a little bit of an explanation of what i'm saying so i'm someone who holds a degree in biology and i'm also pursuing a degree in toxicology currently everything i've seen so far throughout my um, undergraduate and also postgrad um, I would say that breastfed is best. I also believe that all reasons why a mother might choose not to breastfeed is valid and the decision is um, up to her because again, it's her body. So um, yeah. However, for me, I felt like the all the benefits outweighed any um, negatives. So I'm, I'm really for whatever works for you. I'm all for that. And if you're having trouble breastfeeding or something and you really want to breastfeed, I would suggest like talking to a lactation specialist or even talking to a doctor or even like, um, you know, you can join like mom groups and stuff. If you have like questions, I would definitely like reach out to any anybody you think you can reach out to if you really want to breastfeed because I think that there's some really great benefits in breastfeeding. So, second opinion. I don't agree with the crying it out method. And so my thought process in this is I am willing and gratefully willing to aid my children um, and to sleep with whatever techniques is within my means. So like um, sometimes that might include walking around until they're asleep. Sometimes it might include breastfeeding until they're asleep. Um, things like that and why I include like the within your means part is because sometimes you might be too tired to walk around or sometimes you um, might be overstimulated to breastfeed so so my opinion is whatever is within your means um, use that you know but that's just me I feel like with the crying it out method there a lot of times are other things within your means that you could do other than just letting them cry it out i think babies are just like adults with within their need for comfort i think it's perfectly fine to hold your baby while they sleep or to like you know aid them into sleep but yeah i would say i understand sleep deprivation deprivation very well now because it's been like three years since i like slept through the night and i also understand like the desperation that you might feel if your child isn't sleeping through the night or if they're like if sleep is like a really hard thing um to do and if the cry it out method is what works for you i'm all for that if that what keeps you and your baby healthy but for me i never did the cry it out method and um, I think that there was other options within my means to avoid doing the cried out method. The third opinion is I don't believe in baby food. So in my opinion, it's better to cook just one meal and prepare it in a way that your baby can eat. So like a age appropriate meal or age appropriate preparation. So say you're like serving grapes, okay? So you have to cut the grapes a certain way so that, you know, your baby or toddler can eat them. And there's always like charts um, you can find online. So if you just like Google like how to cut, like how to prepare blah, blah, blah for however old your baby is, there's always like little charts and stuff that you can find online. But yeah, it saves money. Baby food is so expensive also with baby food i feel like it's kind of limited to whatever the company is producing i think cooking meals um for your baby allows them to get like a wider range of foods so the fourth opinion is that natural consequences are better than punishments i think that kids can learn from their actions a lot more if there's like a natural consequence so say like um 
hopping off a couch, for example. They're sitting on the couch and then they hop down. So in that example, they're hopping off the couch and they're being, and the consequence of that action is that gravity pulls them down to the floor. Once they learn that gravity is pulling them down to the floor, they might be more careful about how they hop off the couch. So I think in that regard, natural consequences just works better. So instead of like punishing the child for like hopping off the couch, just let them learn that like gravity is a thing and it's gonna pull you down. <laughs> yeah, I think punishments are just additive to the natural consequences that they probably already learned from their action. So the fifth opinion is that I listen to my child's requests within reason. So this can be as simple as like my say like my kid has had two cookies and they're asking for another cookie and I'm like okay instead of having giving you another cookie we're gonna get this piece of vegetable or whatever you know so i'm listening to their request for more food but instead of getting a third cookie we're gonna get like a vegetable in you know so yeah that's kind of what i mean so number six is i apologize to my children so my children are still young so it's like not really like big apologies it's like say like they're walking and i accidentally run into them or something like that then like i'll apologize and be like oh sorry um you know didn't see you there or if i accidentally correct the action that didn't need to be corrected i'll be like oh sorry about that here you go blah 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 so yeah i think that it's important to apologize to your children not only because you want them to learn that um they are worthy of apologies but also you want want them to be able to mimic that same behavior so if they see you apologizing to them when you've wronged them then they might emulate that by apologizing to other people when they wrong other people so this one um, might be a little heavier this is number seven but you don't have to enjoy everything that comes with motherhood so like on tiktok i see a lot of mothers being scared to acknowledge their exhaustion or their anxiety or their depression and from motherhood so yeah i feel like like anything else motherhood is like has good things and bad things um that comes with it so exhaustion is like just one of them and it's okay to be exhausted and not like being exhausted um it's okay to get anxiety and not like the anxiety it's okay to um, fall into depression and not like the depression where it becomes like wearing and not okay is like when like resentment comes into play so i think it's better to acknowledge those things before you start to have like resentment for motherhood you know um acknowledge and also like fix the problems so if you're exhausted like see what you could do about that exhaustion so number eight is being married is helpful for the kids so from this opinion i'm coming from more of a, a logistical standpoint but it can also um correlate in other areas like um stability and like things like that and just like modeling of like loving relationships but i'm just gonna talk about like the logistical side because that's what i've noticed so things are a lot easier when the parents of a child is like married in my opinion um so in my example i'm a u.s citizen and my partner is a uk citizen so with that we're dealing with like two different countries two different ways of doing things so like when it comes to passports when it comes to birth certificates it's like just a lot of it's already a headache in itself but if you're not married it could be a whole different headache um but yeah a big thing that i'm seeing um is that getting your citizenship in like both countries so like your dual citizenship can be a lot difficult a lot more difficult if you're unmarried so this is i feel like very strongly about this okay number nine so having a baby doesn't mean you can't no longer do the things that you like to do like hobbies and like travel or whatever it be 
yeah so i see people being so much in their head like oh the baby might cry what you might not think of is that like babies are humans and it's okay to bring your human babies outside and just experience life it's okay if they cry it's okay if they need a diaper change like you just accommodate them you know and i feel like you get or i know i got like very anxious when i had my first baby and i was like oh how am i gonna go here or how am i gonna go there but really it's as simple as just bring your baby with you just bring your baby with you um there are like certain events that you can't bring your babies to or like you probably shouldn't bring your babies to but those are very few like you can literally bring your baby almost anywhere um people are very accommodating to babies there are countries that are a lot more accommodating to babies than america so that might be why i have this view but in the u.s i noticed that they're not as accommodating compared to like say like denmark because i went to denmark and like the whole like society was like catering to babies and like kids and stuff and like that was different for me because um yeah that was that was different because the u.s sometimes like is not as accommodating or like think about like families <laughs> with kids but yeah it's really just as simple as just finding ways to incorporate them and i'm not saying that it won't be diff more difficult to accommodate them because it will be like if you're an outdoorsy person you're gonna have to find like gear and stuff for the baby and if you want to like go on hikes and stuff you're gonna have to find like carriers that's like specific for you know going on hikes but i'm saying that there's ways to do things and there's ways to bring your baby with you to almost everything when there's a will there's a way so the final one is routines are not necessary for babies babies are gonna get hungry when they get hungry they're gonna get tired when they get tired and you can't always like regulate when that will occur you can try to put them on schedules but really they're like biological clocks will adapt as they get older they quite literally only listen to their bodies and i think it's good to honor that and a lot of times these like routines like stresses out the parent and the child so it really kind of in my opinion doesn't help all that much until like they're older but yeah in my opinion it's a lot easier just to schedule around your kids um times so they're they will eventually start to get on a schedule themselves so like um i kind of just follow their schedule and just you know time whenever i'm gonna do things whenever they nap but yeah those are my opinions my mom opinions um what are yours i want to know but yeah thank you for watching and tell me down below in the comments what you think about these opinions and give me some of your opinions as well that's about it um bye